Hey everyone, Anthony here, and today we're getting back to the basics. So whether you're a beginner smoker or a seasoned smoker that just wants to hang out with me for a little while, you've definitely come to the right place. The most important thing to remember when you're first starting out with premium cigars, it shouldn't be intimidating. Picking out a cigar and getting into cigars should be a relaxing, approachable experience. So today we're gonna to cover the basics. Choosing a cigar, actually cutting the cigar properly and the different ways to cut it, lighting of a cigar, and also things to avoid. But before we get into it, make sure you hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and let's get started. A couple things to consider when choosing your first cigar. I think the most important factor is to keep it approachable and mild. You want something with flavor, but without aggression. So when I first started smoking and something I cut my teeth on, was the Ashton Classic, and in particular this Magnum. You know, it's a very approachable cigar, it has creamy notes to it, but that's where you wanna start. You don't wanna jump into the deep end of the pool and start with a real strong cigar, because that'll definitely scare you off. So start with a mild to medium body cigar and kinda of go from there. Another cigar that I highly recommend for beginners and I enjoy personally for a mild cigar is the Perdomo Champagne Series. Shade wrapper, Nicaraguan, but an excellent, approachable, flavorful cigar. Another one you might want to take into consideration is the La Roma de Cuba Passion. So the Passion is a little bit more medium, maybe medium plus in body, but the flavor profile of it is a nuttiness to it, which a lot of beginner smokers tend to like, and I know I love it from a cigar. So between the Passion, the Perdomo Champagne, and the Ashton Classic, all three of them are excellent choices for beginner smokers. So now that we've picked our cigar, let's get to cutting our cigar. So essentially there's three different methods to cutting a premium cigar. So we'll start with the most traditional and probably most popular, the guillotine, or some people call it a straight cut. The most important thing to remember when using a straight cut or a guillotine cut is that you don't wanna cut the cigar too deep. So this is the head of the cigar, this is the foot of the cigar. So at the head of the cigar, you could actually see a cap where the cigar maker actually rounded it off. There's usually three lines there called a triple cap. You wanna cut above those three lines the best way to think about it without being too intimidated is think of a dime at the top of a cigar. You just want to cut off a small sliver to allow airflow, which will allow smoke. Also, you have the punch cut, which just puts a little bullet hole at the back or the head of the cigar. Pops it out, tobacco comes out. And the third method is, which is gaining a lot of popularity, is the V cutter, or some people call it a cat's eye cutter. Me personally, I definitely usually use a guillotine, but when I use the V-cut or a cat's eye cut is when I'm smoking a shaped cigar, like a bellicoso or a torpedo. So you can envision at the top of the cigar, the cat's eye or V-cut maintains the integrity of the shape. So now that we've discussed several methods on cutting a cigar, let's get this one cut and then we'll talk about the lighting process. Okay, let's get this thing fired up. So the first step to lighting a cigar is the toasting of a cigar. So the first thing you want to do is get that lighter ready to go, get the foot of the cigar, and let it have it. The whole circumference of the foot of the cigar should be evenly lit to ensure nice even burn. You should definitely turn the cigar as you're toasting it. And what you're doing there, aside from getting the filler, you're also getting the wrapper lit. Because so if you just light the inside without getting the wrapper, cigars have a tendency to tunnel. You don't want that to happen. So now that we've properly toasted the foot of the cigar, all you need to do is just actually puff on a little bit. And after you do that, look at your cigar. Make sure the wrapper is evenly lit. Again, if you start right with the cigar, you ensure a better, cleaner burn, which is very important to the integrity of the cigar and obviously to make it more enjoyable. One thing to keep in mind is, as beginners ask, when do I ash the cigar? The one thing I would tell you is, let an ash build a little bit, it's a handmade product. So unlike a cigarette where people are constantly tapping into an ashtray, you don't wanna do that with a premium cigar. It will hold an ash. And then, honestly, it's a testament to the craftsmanship of the cigar maker. As you're smoking a cigar, do you see the ash maybe fracture a little bit? You can give it a quick tap and then relight the whole process. Toast it again, bring it to your mouth, make sure it's evenly lit. 
As a beginner, the other thing to keep in mind is always light your own cigar. I think what happens is a lot of times when you're a new smoker, you're intimidated even to light it yourself, so you want someone else to do it for you. It's no disrespect to say no, no to decline. The reason why I say that is because if you light your own cigar, you tend to take your time and not rush it. If you rush it and only light half the cigar, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a tunnel up to one side, and that makes for an unpleasant smoke. A couple things you definitely want to avoid as a beginner. Never put your cigar in your mouth prior to cutting it. Honestly, even if it's your own cutter. I see so many people just put the cigar in their mouth, reach for their cutter, now obviously your spits on your cigar, and then you go to proceed to cut it. That's a major no-no. The other thing is licking your cigar. I see people licking their cigar up and down before they cut it and light it. It's not the Old West. It's not the early 1900s. We have humidification. The cigar's properly humidified. This is not Tombstone, Arizona. Also, the thing to keep in mind is when you're having a spirit with a cigar. I see way too many people that insist on dipping the cigar into a fine spirit. They get a $90 pour of scotch, they get a premium cigar, $25 cigar, and your first thing is to dip the head of the cigar into the drink. It doesn't make for a pleasant experience. They're meant to be enjoyed together, but not together. You got it? Also, the other thing to keep in mind is it's a premium cigar. It's not meant to be inhaled. So unlike cigarettes, a premium cigar is meant to be savored. You know, it's not meant to be brought into your lungs. You'll see people sometimes they call bridging it or bring it into their nose. I wouldn't advocate it right off the bat trying to do it, but it's something over time you can learn to do. So bridging a cigar, if you could practice it at home, and again, I don't advocate it right off the bat, just press your tongue to the roof of your mouth as you bring the cigar smoke in and then blow it through your nose. That's the most you want to inhale it. Again, keep it in mind, no inhaling premium cigars. Okay, so that concludes our video. Hopefully you thoroughly enjoyed it. And don't forget, if you have a question for us or maybe some content that we haven't covered yet, just drop us a comment. As always, don't forget to hit that like button, smash the subscribe button, and we'll see you here next time.